good afternoon and welcome to cc gurukul lecture in today's lecture in continuation with the series on sociology of india the topic of discussion is caste and class in india now it becomes very significant to understand indian society from the perspective of caste class what is often referred as caste class nexus so to begin with we know that india as a society has been conceptualized by both western scholars and as well as indian scholars so it became an object of study from the post colonial time and it started kind of being understood as a society which has a unique system of stratification a stratification based on the hierarchy of caste and caste was seen as one of the basis of describing india as a close society as an unequal society and the second theory that came in was the theory coming in with social change which was prescribed that with globalization with modernization social change would take place and caste would give way to class now when we look into over the ways in which the caste class has been conceptualized in india there are a lot of problems and there are a lot of complexities so to begin with let us first understand what we mean by caste and what we mean by class and then we will understand the relation between the two with specific reference to india so as we know and it has been discussed by a number of lecture in this cec series on sociology of india caste has long been viewed as a distinctive feature representing the core of indian society so any outsider wanting to know about what is india what is indian society were given the impression that india is a caste based society now when we say india is a caste based society it implied that it caste was regarded as an institution that characterized the structure of social stratification or the social structure of india specifically hindu society was described as a caste society scholars have described caste as both an institution as well as an ideology so what does it mean when we say caste is an institution we know that it becomes a basis for arranging social relations among different groups so from a very basic understanding of caste system we know that society divided people into different groups four groups or five groups and then based on the ranking in the hierarchy social relations were regulated so it arranges and organizes social groups in term of the status and the position in the social and economic system social because it was a question of interdining uh, it was a question of commensality with whom one would marry and economic because it also led in directly to the access of resources therefore it was kind of described as a system of exploitation as appropriation those who were ranked lower were denied access to economic resources now when we understand caste as an ideology it implies that it is a set of values and idea that legitimize the system and that quite of also makes us understand that it has been an institution which was dated to aryan period and there were a lot of protest from uh, people who were from non hindu background from social reformers by outsiders despite that as an ideology it continues and many scholars have said that caste is integral even in today contemporary society so it is a value system that legitimizes and reinforces the ex- existing structures of social inequality but what is different is the way in which caste regulated social structure in a traditional society and the way it is uh, re- linked to religion to politics to communal violence in contemporary society so when we looked into the traditional society we know that it was used as a label to describe india as a closed society based on rigidity 
Why rigidity? Because of the idea was that the caste would stratify society into these fixed group and mobility would be different. So, when we kind of go back to the original understanding of book, uh, school books which would tell us a difference between caste and class, this was done with referring India as a closed society, caste as a system of closed uh, stratification and this was compared to the West. The West which had class as a system of stratification was described as an open society with the possibility of mobility. So, this modeling of Indian society based on a structure defined as closed and uh, no mobility became significant way in which society was understood. Now, when we kind of go back to the uh, theories which has been given by a number of scholars in terms of origin of caste system, we see that caste was understood by opposing it or by comparing it to the advanced industrial society in the west and therefore this distinction was kind of clearly marked out between caste as a closed system, class as an open system of stratification, caste based on ascribed status that is on birth the status was ascribed. It was a group inequality versus class which is an achieved status, so based on your skills and knowledge and ability to acquire uh, status, it was also in terms of an individual difference. So, this was the major way in which caste and class was understood in the initial days. But if we look into the contemporary time, we will see that there is a kind of an overlap and both are systems of inequality and not much kind of a uh, polar opposition or binary opposition may come significant when we try to understand the nature of social stratification in India. So, class position was changeable based on merit, skills and ability of individual and there was this possibility of upward mobility. So, through acquiring skills and knowledge, one could move from say a lower rank in the class hierarchy to a upper rank and this reflected the change in economic so, uh, position. So, when we look into the understanding of caste, because it is kind of very complex, it is kind not so simple as describing it as a system of hierarchy or describing it as a system of in a kind of ranking. They are the context in which caste has been used is one is specifically to Indian society. And when we understand caste specifically to Indian society, if we can use the term jati which kind of also refers to the subdivision between caste to understand the Indian nature of social stratification. But when we try to understand caste in non-Indian context in the West, it refers to any social class or group separated relatively or permanently from others by difference of rank, wealth, tradition, profession and race. So, a number of criteria comes in to explain what uh, would defined as caste. Now, we, if we look into what is common in both the definition, the definition which is used specifically to Indian society and the one which is used for uh, the western society, we see the common factor is endogamy. Now, endogamy was in terms of marrying uh, within your own caste and therefore, the idea of endogamy is only to maintain the exclusivity. So, if we try to understand endogamy in the caste, it was practiced to maintain the purity of caste system. So, those higher in the rank were considered as religiously pure. So, this was very specific to the Hindu society and therefore, they could not intermingle in terms of marriage in order to kind of uh, affect the purity. Similarly, when it comes to the question of uh, uh, western society, this exclusivity of the group was retained. The other criteria which kind of is also common in both the understanding is food, the relation of commensality which kind of binds people from one group and is exclusive. 
So, when we look into the understanding of what is the nature of uh, the understanding of caste to reference to India, we see that there are certain traits or there are certain features which distinguishes Hindu caste or Jati system from caste like group in other parts of the world. So, this idea that it is only for to be found in the Indian society, Hindu society is also not correct because some form of stratification, some form of inequality is uh, there in every society. It is only the way the discourses have enabled us to understand the nature of Indian society. So, what are these specific traits? The number one is obviously the specific kinship nature of its internal organization. So, there is a lot of emphasis in terms of maintaining social structure through kin relation. Number two is the relation to the structure of Indian class society as a whole. So, caste and class is kind of not completely pole opposite or they are kind of not completely contrasted to each other. There is a common flow from the both and both can be understood as system of inequality, system of inequality uh, where one is more in terms of group inequality, the other could be at the level of individual achievements and uh, mobility. So, we also know that this whole understanding of how the caste system functioned in Indian society has been subject to change both at the empirical level and also the way in which discourses have understood the social change in India. So, when we look into the idea of the social change, we see that caste continues to regulate social relation especially when we kind of refer to it in terms of rules of marriage. And there are a lot of literature in social sciences which kind of tells us that because of change, because of globalization, policies of reservation and economic changes, what has happened is the caste has moved away from the uh, public domain and it has kind of got still strengthened as an identity at the private level. So, the rules of marriage are still based on endogamous and therefore, this inequality which is practiced is form of caste identity. And then the problem it gets even co complicated when number of identity kind of end messes. So, caste identity was your religious identity versus your uh, other identity. And then it is becomes a question of uh, uh, violence and conflict. So, therefore, we can understand in a very uh, systematic manner that caste as an ideology is still significant in the society. Now, we come to social class. Now, when we try to understand social class, we know that it is a group of people within a society who possesses the same socio-economic status. So, most of the time again in uh, literature, one understand that caste is a social category. It is a idea of social differentiation because it was most of the time based on the ritual hierarchy. Whereas, class is an economic uh, status and that was at, uh, understood in terms of level of income, uh, the consumption pattern, the capacity to uh, 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 purchase in the market or the capacity to kind of take part in the economic transaction. So, we know that class becomes more significant in the early 19th century. Even in the Indian context, in, uh, context we see that in the post-colonial uh, period, the class as a social ranking becomes more prominent than it was in the earlier time. So, there were these terms which was earlier used like clank, order, these were kind of uh, uh, more descriptive in terms of uh, hierarchical groupings and class then becomes a question of again labeling a certain group versus the other. In sociology, we are familiar that there are two theoretical 
in understanding of uh, class which is kind of very important and much of us as student of sociology are aware that the economic understanding of class as an institution comes in from Karl Marx and then Weber kind of gives us a uh, understanding of uh, the system of stratification based on class, status and party. So, if we look at Karl Marx, we know that he was kind of differentiating between two types of society, one in which the modes of production that is the nature of its technology and division of labor are in the hands of the capitalist and the other class which is kind of denied any good. So, this private mode of production kind of gave rise to distinctive class system in which there is a relation of uh, appropriation of the surplus value arising from the private mode of production. So, this distinctive class system which emerges with the uh, capitalist uh, society is the one in which there are two classes, one which controls and directs the process of production because they have the ownership of the modes of production and the another class which are the class which has kind of no ownership and they are under the uh, control of the owners and therefore this uh, relation between the owners and those who are non-owners of production is a relation of appropriation and exploitation. So, the relations between the two class that is the capitalist class and the working class are antagonistic because they are in conflict over the utilization or the value which was emerging from the capitalist modes of production. When we look into the Marxist approach, it has been used uh, widely by Indian sociologists and other social scientists to understand the nature of class and class conflict in India. So, we can make refer to Ashok Rudra who used a Marxist perspective to analyze class composition of Indian agricultural uh, composition and he was of opinion that there are only two classes in Indian agriculture, the big landlord and the agricultural labor. Now, these two classes is very similar to what Marx talks about the capitalist and the non-owners of uh, modes of production. So, the uh, big landlords who own the modes of production and the agricultural labor are in antagonistic relationship with each other and this constitutes the principal contradiction of Indian rural society. And if we look into a lot of study on the agrarian structure, we see that those who were in a position of upper caste were the ones who were able to control land were the ones who kind of own resources. So, most of the statistics on rural agrarian structure suggest that the big landlords are from the upper caste and they are able to utilize the economic resources and political power to continue to maintain their hegemony in the uh, rural society. The second study or, or utilization of Marxist approach to understand Indian society was D.P. Mukherjee. D.P. Mukherjee was critical of the efficacy of the analysis of Indian social phenomena and he says that there were three limitations in kind of using Marxist analysis to India. The first is that Marxist analysis was every time in terms of class conflict. So, the Marx basic understanding of class is from only the modes of production. Whereas in India, the uh, stratification or inequality, we need to look into multiple other social relations and it is not purely an economic relations that kind of construct social uh, structure. Number two, the conflict in India, specifically the agrarian conflict or industrial conflict needs to be understood in terms of the caste class nexus, which is there is a kind of an overlapping between the caste and class identity of certain category of people. And number three, the way economic pressure worked 
is not that of mechanical force moving to a dead matter. So, this is kind of a larger critic of Marx which was kind of very materialistic oriented and a kind of negated non-economic factor in understanding class relations. Now, the second theory in sociology is Weber's theory of class. Now, according to Weber, class is a social group of individual who shares a similar position in a market economy. So, the position of class is related to the market position and therefore, the position will determine a similar reward. Individual in a particular group or a class will have a common income and that he is able to draw by working in the market economy and that drawing of the compensation from the market will determine the position in the social status. So, according to Weber, individuals and families belong to different class based on the economic position in society, but there are other uh, status also which imp uh, is important, which is your social status and also your political uh, status. Now, when we look into Max Weber's uh, application to understanding caste class relations in India, we know that it is becomes more significant to understand uh, uh, Indian system of inequality because of his three tier theory, which is class, status and party. So, we are aware that class becomes a market position, status is your social position and party is a political position. So, caste and class are both status group according to Weber. According to Weber, a status group is a collection of person who says a distinctive style of life and a certain consciousness of kind. So, while caste is perceived as a hereditary group, so this is again the theorization of caste from the western uh, orientalist perspective where caste was seen as being ascribed at the time of birth. It fixes a ritual status of individual in society whereas class is a category of people who have similar economic status in relation to other segments of the community or society. Now, after conceptualizing the con category of caste and class, let us understand how this uh, relation between the two have undergone change with reference to the theorization of social change. So, caste and class are two different forms of social stratification, but in many instances they found to overlap with each other. So, an answer to a prominent question is, has caste changed to class? Is that change from one kind of structure of inequality to another or is it a change from a system of inequality to equality? So, earlier caste was characterized by inter-caste differentiation of roles as well as differentiation within particular caste. So, the question which is very significant is is caste giving way to class? This would be a kind of a critique of the evolutionary theories of social change that were based on the assumption that caste would give way to caste. Some view are a kind of accepting the fact that it has they are completely polar opposite and therefore one would give way to the other. The other set of theorists would argue that there is a nexus there is a relation, most of the time this relation is not visible and therefore it needs an in-depth understanding of the way in which the two have worked over the years. The western scholars, in particular by the British administrators and ethnographer, they understood caste and class as polar opposite. The reason why they do understood caste and class as polar opposite was because of the comparative method they used to compare Indian society with the western society. These theorists observed that caste and class are different forms of social stratification. I have already given you the different ways in which the differentiation was done. 
So, in this view when we look at the two categories as polar opposite or completely opposed to each other, social change, modernization, globalization, industrialization would lead to a change in from caste hierarchy to class stratification, from a closed system to an open system of stratification, from organic to segmentary system. These are the some of the ways in which the change has been described. Now, when we look into the idea of status, rigidity, immutability and organic solidarity, functional and independence homo hierarchy and pollution, pollu these were some of the features which was described. And class was described as an ideology of individualism, competition and equality. But the other theory is that both caste and class are real and empiric. They are interactional, hierarchical and incorporate each other. It has been dynamic and full of contradiction. They have been violation of caste norms but does not mean removal from the caste system. And therefore, the argument of the second school of thought is that caste incorporates class and class incorporates caste. Neither the caste view alone nor the class view alone can explain the entire gamut of Indian social reality. Caste class nexus applies observation of caste and class as mutually inherent phenomena. It is a framework which goes beyond microtransaction and therefore leads to a macro conceptualization of the ground reality. It is kind of going beyond class and going beyond caste for a more uh, understanding. So, nexus implies a set of ties and connection between the two and it becomes the basis of structural and uh, cultural change that is taking place. A number of sociologists like Andre Bete, Dipankar Gupta, Leela Fernandez have kind of talked about the caste class nexus which is working. A, a thorough reading of these sociological help, uh, work will enable us to understand the nature of caste class nexus in India. With this whole idea of understanding the two system of stratification of how they were kind of considered as opposed to each other to the idea of uh, uh, incorporating each other helps us to understand the nature of social inequality in India. With this, I come to an end of this lecture. Thank you.